It's a privilege to be here with you this morning. Thank you, Teresita, for the invitation and to everyone who has been working so diligently to change the face of our museums and institutions. Many artists think about the white cube as a space to question, explore, create, and think beyond the box through a visual language. For me, the white cube needs those creative and subversive elements, but art as a language must also extend into the social and political realms. My introduction to the art world began at home. It was the painting The Third of May by Francisco Goya. The left image is a recreated version done by my aunt, and the right image is the original. For the majority of my adolescence, I was intrigued and fascinated with this piece and thought my aunt was the artist of this magnificent painting. <laughs> Finding out later, she had replicated it for my father. Personally, this painting proved to be a complex piece full of inquiry. It was revolutionary for its time, challenged the boundaries of art, and depicted a reality few had previously seen. Being a young age and confronting the brutality of war through this painting awakened an awareness of the vicious realities of injustices. Reflecting on a few vital spaces that I have been exposed to has shaped this crucial dialogue. My aunt, who recreated the Goya painting, did not pursue art as a profession, but in turn became a physician. At a young age, I was allowed to attend surgical procedures with her. These surgeries exposed me to an intimate space where I saw the value and fragility of life in a profound way. My aunt was able to directly and indirectly demonstrate the power of humanity through painting and the capability of saving a life. More recently, I was fortunately invited to observe private sessions at the UN in Geneva, Switzerland with the Working Group on Enforced and Involuntary Disappearance Cases. This was a space to observe conversations and policy around intense violence and grief. And here I am today in another very important space, not only as an observer, but an active participant addressing our place in museums, galleries, institutional spaces, and how the issues of human life, the human condition, and our human right coincide with our right to participate in the arts. A defining moment for me was walking into the Blanton Museum of Art in Austin, Texas and seeing the work of Teresita Fernandez. That was pivotal and emotional. Up to that point, the only other artist I truly connected to in terms of their artistic practice was Eva Hesse. Now for the first time, I was and could see myself inside the white cube. Latino Latina artists are often placed in boxes that become limiting and force us to work twice as hard to be exhibited alongside our contemporaries. As an artist who focuses on human rights violations and the absence and erasure of individuals, I was recently invited to be part of an all-inclusive Latino Latina exhibition. When I inquired about the exhibit and other artists involved, the curator informed me we were selected because we fit in these boxes and themes. This curator felt it necessary to place me in a box based on my ethnicity rather than allowing me to define myself as the artist that I am. I offered alternative ways to approach the exhibition that would be inclusive of other artists who focus on similar issues. I realized the opening would coincide with Hispanic Heritage Month and clearly the institution had its own mission and quota to fill. I could say this example is the exception, but it is not. Do I only have value as an artist when a curator needs to fill his or her quota for their Heritage Month exhibition? Can I not be an artist who is respected for her work? Or is the designation of artist without any ethnic modifiers only reserved for certain artists? I want my work to be in conversation with other artists addressing similar issues and topics while presenting universal themes and concerns. My young assistant, who is a Mexican national living in the US and, a, and, cur and currently a BFA student in Texas, had a discriminatory experience in the classroom. A classmate had invited her to sit for a portrait. Happy to participate, she never thought to ask to see the portrait in progress. On the final day of critique, she was taken aback by her peers' representation of her. The classmate had painted her wearing a sombrero with a t-shirt that read illegal. 
None of her professors, regardless of ethnicity, assessed the incident to see that she was upset or offended by this. This revealed to me how problematic incidents like this exist in institutions and universities and how they go unnoticed and unchecked. The system itself has already done the job of segregating our mentality. As an artist, it is my duty to look beyond those structural limitations, to develop ideas and responses that cast light and transparency on that very behavior and redirect it. Institutions and universities should be pushing boundaries, exposing inequality, and act as a model for others to follow. They should not simply perpetuate discrimination based on economic needs. The visual arts share a relationship to the global and economic market, but should not be confined by it. Artists are often invited to help redevelop environments and landscapes that at one point were dilapidated and underdeveloped. At that point, real change begins to occur, and what is deemed to be a space of no entry is now a vibrant and thriving environment of partnership and creativity. If there's any place that can attest to that, it is New York City. There is a structure that already exists within these institutions, but there is a fundamental need for renovation. Here we are today, ready to help shift the paradigm to make it look and feel more like the rest of this nation. It's been said that change comes when you have advocates of change. My aunt's rendition of the 3rd of May by Goya filled me with questions that still consume me to this day. It shall be my ongoing effort to give visual insight and voice to injustices that permeate the human condition in various spaces. As the U.S. continues to grow and diversify in the arts, we need to address these issues and strengthen efforts with solutions, pipelines, opportunities, and support to generate change. We are all Americans with our own rich culture who want our place to be honored and remembered, not erased. <laughs>